slash to the site. Uh, but the entire Connect Home playbook is available on the Connect Home website, um, connecthome.hud.gov. And it really provides a step-by-step -step guide um, for your communities based off the best practices that we've learned from the work that you're doing. So uh, we encourage all of you to take a look at it and also to share it with other communities because uh, it builds off of your experience and provides a step-by-step -step guide for how other communities can be uh, part of narrowing the digital divide. Okay, um, while we're waiting for her, I'll just kind of talk through um, her slides on, on really the heart gap and, and what was driving forward behind Connect Home and ultimately behind the partnerships with schools. And that is that, um, you know, in this day and age, the Internet is essential for students to succeed at school. Uh, we know that 70% that, um, of teachers now assign homework online. Uh, many school districts provide grades and feedback for um, parents and students online. And without access to the Internet at home, it's simply impossible for students to uh, be part of that. So um, Connect Home was really designed initially in, in the pilot to ensure that students who are assisted housing have access to the Internet at home and um, aren't subject to the homework gap. So um, with that in mind, Christina, if you could just advance the slide. How can schools and, and public housing authorities work together to make this happen? Um, that's really the, the heart of this playbook in today's webinar, um, and it happens in a few different ways. One uh, really critical way, as you'll see from some of our communities, is helping to identify students um, and make sure that the, they're brought and they have that connection from school to home. So, you know, in a lot of cases, uh, our PHAs don't necessarily know every K through 12 student who um, lives in a uh, development, and all schools don't necessarily know, um, you know students who may not have access to the Internet at home. So one essential role that um, Connect Home can play is in helping to make that linkage. Um, another essential uh, piece of Connect Home and partnering with schools is really leveraging some of the technology resources to, um, to make sure that whether it's through libraries or through the school itself, um, students have access to devices at home. So you'll see in its models, our communities were able to um, use some innovative approaches to provide students with um, devices and internet access through the schools themselves. Uh, and finally, our schools are, are a great resource for providing education and training, and um, that's an essential piece of the Connect Home model. It's one of the three legs of the uh, broadband device and digital literacy training school. So uh, it's, it's really uh, essential for the success of Connect Home to, to partner with schools um, to make sure that our students have the, the training that they need to succeed. Check real quickly. Susan, are you able to, um, are you going to line? Okay. So, um, so how do you get involved with schools? Well, what we found in looking at some of the best practices from our Connect Home communities is that uh, there, there's a lot of overlap, and so it's important to focus on shared goals. And what that means is that, you know, schools have an interest in making sure that their students have access to Internet at home. They may not have the resources to make that happen, but um, they definitely have a, a vested interest in their students' success at ways that your interests can overlap, whether it's um, you know, making sure that uh, devices that the students can access, that can take from home to school, um, you know, make sure to highlight those very common interests. Um, another key is really just the personal and getting to know who the folks are in the school district and the school. Um, you know, a lot of our communities, it really comes down to personal relationships to make these kind of partnerships happen. So. Uh, you know, it's an essential piece of connecting with school leaders and um, school district leadership. And then, you know, of course, the parents 
themselves through parent-teacher associations. Uh, you know, they will be involved. They they're really excited uh, when they got connected to home to learn about this opportunity. And so you're a great, great resource when you're thinking about who to partner with um, to get in touch with the PTA. When we talk about the shared goals from schools and PHAs, um, there's two pieces. There's the student access and the parent access. And as, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of the feedback that used to be through parent-teacher conferences, um, through one-on-one -on -one conversations at school, now happens online. So um, whether student portals where um, parents can access grades, they can have conversations. Um, this is a really key component of the relationship between um, parents and schools and uh, partnering with schools to make sure that parents have those connections through platforms like Connect Home. Uh, the other piece of it, of course, is student achievement, and making sure that students have access to uh, the resources online for their homework, uh, for researching, for reports, but also that they can use the computers and devices themselves um, to write, um, you know, analyze data, um, really become part of the 21st century economy. Um, and, and learn the skills that are um, that are going to be helpful today. So who are some of the folks at schools that are important to know? Um, so school level, the the principals. You know, a lot of schools actually have um, now IT staff who are part of the schools who are uh, you know at the school who are important to know. Um, the district-wide level, there's the CTOs, the CIOs, um, and, and the superintendents. And, and now we're really finding that in a lot of cases, the, the CIOs and the CTO are very, um, have close working relationships with the superintendents and with their school boards because, you know, it's no longer just about making sure that there's computers in the classroom, but they're really seen as essential components to, to making sure that learning happens. So it's just, you know, reaching out to parent-teacher associations, uh, a lot of schools and school districts have these, and uh, by establishing relationships not just with the schools but with the parents, it can uh, be a great resource for getting the word out to parents uh, about Connect Home, but then also, you know, maybe tapping into some other resources in the community, you know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Hi, right, we're getting some um, folks, I think, talking the line. Um, Karina, is everything okay with the audio connection? I'm trying to mute people that are not entered, but if you could go ahead and mute yourself if you're um, not presenting, that would help. Okay, great. Um, Apologize that Susan's having, uh, we're not able to have her. Um, uh, this is, uh, but we do have some of our communities on board who have some great information for you. So, um, Christina, if you could just advance the slide. And, uh, you know, that a lot of communities that were really successful with, uh, in partnering with schools were persistent um, and, they, and they followed up, you know, beyond the initial pitch. I mean, I think a lot of schools are interested in Connect Home and in what this can offer, but they're also very busy and they have a lot of things going on. So what we saw in our communities that have really experienced success is that they followed up and they were persistent and, um, you know, they were able to sort of uh, get to the next level beyond that initial connection, um, which we'll see in some of our case studies today. So once again, I mean, I think this is uh, really you know, the heart of, uh, of what Connect Home is about. And in the playbook, um, a lot of the information really builds to this chapter, which is you know, setting up your um, Connect Home initiative, bringing partners to the table, making sure that you have all three elements of the three-legged stool. Um, you know, and, and, and this is really the end point, which is making sure that students actually have access to the Internet device digital literacy training. Um, so, th so this is a really key component of, of Connect Home. Uh, we have, again, Denver and Fresno here to present today, but a lot of communities um, are doing some really great work with these partnerships. Uh, 
you know, in, in a number of different ways, whether it's uh, providing devices, training, um, you know, even just getting the word out that this opportunity is available. Uh, and so, you know, some of the communities here, I think, um, have really um, provided uh, a great model for uh, connectivity and for other communities to follow in terms of these partnerships. So you all might have seen New York um, earlier this year announced uh, a partnership to buy 5,000 free wireless hotspots to students um, through, through a checkout model. So um, the schools and the libraries, the, the city essentially owns the devices, but they check them out to students um, in targeted hard, high need neighborhoods, and they do it through, um, through use of a library card. So this is kind of an innovative approach where um, the devices can be year after year to help connect students, and uh, they use the library and schools as a platform to, to help get those devices to students. And the themselves, of course, provide internet access. Uh, although not an official Connect Home pilot community, um, was a, a community that the Department of Education sort of identified as having um, another really innovative model using the um, school identification number instead of a library card. So we know that um, for a lot of students, you know, uh, we want to use the barriers. And then the library card in some cases can be an extra barrier, whether it's putting documentation of address or, or any of the other information. Being able to Charlotte's model. And um, there's another case where they actually um, worked with the schools uh, who had developed uh, an online portal um, to then use Connect Home to help ensure that the parents were able to access that portal. Um, so they came up with a process to identify students, um, conduct outreach, make sure that they let the families know that this was a resource that was available, and to actually provide them with uh, devices that, that are pre-installed app that parents could use to access the portal. So it kind of um, created a start to finish solution where they were able to actually train the, the students and parents to use this and in the end, um, you know, increase the adoption of this platform that they had already developed and, and spent a lot of time and money to develop, um, connect home sort of allowed them to actually use this as a, as a platform. That in mind now, we really want to take a deep dive into two of our communities uh, who uh, we're really happy to have today, um, Denver and Fresno. And so um, if the phone Denver are on the line, um, can you just let us know? And, uh, yes. Great. All right. Well, uh, thank you. Please uh, take the stage. Sure. My name is Tony Frank, and I'm with Denver Housing Authority. I'm, I'm going to get off with just four slides to give you some background on Connect Home Denver, and then I'm going to turn it over to our Denver Public Schools partners who will speak to the programs that we've partnered with. On the first slide, very good. Um, our, our first year in our pilot uh, has involved five Denver Housing Authority developments um, that have 1,150 units, family units. Um, and those are, there's eight communities to you with those neighbors um, that they're, they're a part of. And neighborhoods in Denver can be defined as West Denver and Southwest Denver as part of two areas of our city. And we, in our process of selecting the, the, the pilot communities, we had a strategic plan that really looked at making sure they were near Denver Public Schools uh, sites, Denver Public Library branches, and boys and girls clubs. So in some cases, they're almost directly across the street. In some cases, they're just a few blocks. Uh, to identify where all the schools our, our, our kids go to within each of the sites. And, um, and that was part of, you know, part of that. Um, I've heard about the, the checkout programs. Um, Denver, we too work with Denver Public Library. And um, the phase of the checkout program with, with DPL involved five branches. And four of those branches were, were selected to be near these, these developments in our target neighborhoods. So I'm really beginning to align with, with others, including Denver Public Schools, which we'll, which we'll hear more about. And um, you'll know more about something called technology hubs that 
within five properties, um, there are there are for two centers uh, where there are community classes and and, and we've work closely with one key partner being Comcast to turn them into technology hubs, um, having high-speed Wi-Fi within the, within the building. Uh, computers, as well as other technology, that includes video conference equipment and smart touch screens, large screens that people can touch and access the internet that way. And that's been a big help to this too has been PCs for people. Um, and we'll hear more about that here soon. Next slide, please. And with um, with our structure involving a core team, um, Denver Public Schools, Denver Public Library, House of Economic Development, um, that's our core team, and we have what we call um, um, action teams, which are ISPs, which are device providers, um, education as well. Um, we came up with this vision and, and, and um, mission for for our for our Connect Home Denver pilot. Next, next, please. Um, focused on our partnerships with schools, and um, here are just some highlights that that take us back over the last two decades. Denver Housing Authority has worked closely with our schools. Um, there have been some natural linkages, including grants and application grants that we've been awarded. Um, in the list there, um, Denver Public Schools has been a key partner in half of those grants. Um, Connect Ed, which existed before before Connect Home, um, and any of our schools that we're uh, working closely with have have already benefited from from Connect Ed and uh, and have been um, uh, just sort of alignment with what what Connect Home is doing and going on for the last two decades. And next slide, uh, we'll get to specifically what, what Connect Home has allowed to. To um, focus on three three programs here that I'll going to turn over to DPS to speak to. Um, one being our DPS and family empowerment teams. Um, secondly, our, our education technology team, uh, which includes Common Sense, which is a national partner of, of um, um, and. And there are 15 neighborhood schools that we have worked uh, uh, focused on as target schools that are near our, our DHA sites. And I'll turn it, turn it over uh, to the, the parent portal, Katie Maestas, uh, at this time. Hi, everyone. I'm Katie Maestas. I am the outreach and support manager for DPS's academic portal team. Um, the academic portal team, we have a principal, teacher, parent student portal um, to focus specifically on the parent student portal and how our relationship with Gex Home has supported our families in monitoring progress. Um, so DPS decided to custom build an online parent and student portal um, and this tool is designed to monitor student progress and really serve as the first stop shop for parents and students to ask as the very applications, um, learning on learning applications that we have as a district. Um, the reason we custom build our tool is to really address um, the echo kind of access and look at um, technical like literacy skills with our parents. Um, we have visual graphics on there in case our parents don't understand assessment data. Um, we also have resources to support learn at home, and so parents have an option to click on resources to learn about homework and standards-based cleaning and how they can best support a student um, at home academically. And we had to ensure that, that we provided language support in our top 10 languages. Um, DPS has roughly 171 dialects within our district, and so we took our top 10 languages to provide um, support within the online URL tool. We also developed a mobile app, um, and our mobile app currently has full translation languages. I'll share some adoption data with you. Um, when we started planning and um, kind of grassroots of the Connect Home initiative, our, our adoption rate for our URL, the myportal.dpsk12 
stuff site, um, we're at a 43.4% adoption rate. And through um, partnerships and working directly with schools, um, and specifically the Next Home Initiative, um, over this past year, our adoption rate has, has moved up to 75.3%. Um, so that's telling you that 75.3% of our students have at least one parent in the household with a parent portal account. Our MOAP data, we started the year off with um, 2,400 downloads and ended the school year with 5,800 downloads. I just wanted to give you a little background on our custom tool that we have built, and I'll move on to our family empowerment team. And so through Connect Home, we brought in our family and family engagement office and it's a group of our larger community engagement office. Um, and this team specifically works directly with schools to train parents on all kinds of things. Um, so we took two of their sessions, um, engaging with your child, and this is taking uh, not just the technology of the connection, but really to larger um, need that we saw in our school communities. So um, each session focused on social emotional development, um, like EC through 12, and then we added in technology. So we looked at really leveraging existing efforts um, to integrate the technology piece so parents could really connect the dots and find value in that. Um, overall, our collaborative efforts, um, just little wins that we hit, um, we added our parent portal and student portal logos to all the PCs distributed by Denver Housing, Housing Authority. Um, we did locate parent portal kiosks in all of the Housing Authority Opportunity Centers. Uh, we targeted schools within our high need areas that have location rates for the parent and student portal. And we also leveraged Denver Housing Authority's property newsletters and their digital inclusion guide to include information about the parent portal, the value of using it as a tool. I'll pass over, that was really quick, so hopefully we have questions at the end, but I'm gonna pass over to my colleague, Brian Dino, um, from our Educational Technology and Li Library Services Department. All right, good, so I'm Brian Dino, and I work uh, a lot uh, with schools on internet safety and with families on managing family media. And it was mentioned earlier in the uh, web that there's a lot of overlap between the Connect Home and schools. And so uh, Tony came to us and said, we're going to provide our families uh, some internet, but now we have some content. And so what we do is, is we provide over 30 free research libraries and academic resources for all the families in Denver Public Schools, and this includes a lot of the families in development here in Denver. So, so we give them access, and now we give them uh, all of their curriculum. In fact, this fall, uh, all of the high school literature will be available digitally. So families in these developments don't need to spend money on textbooks. It will be all available for them digitally. Uh, all of our middle school language arts curriculum will be available online free for kids to read, and we're approaching that at, uh, almost 100% with elementary school, and providing in as many languages as possible. So directly linked on the DDS parent portal that Katie just referenced. Uh, I think that uh, we work with families and also in the development is, is again, you have the internet at home, it's a good thing, but as we know, the internet can be a free for all, especially for parents with listeners. What is is appropriate for kids to access on the internet. So we do a lot of uh, shops on what we call managing family media, where we introduce the common sense uh, sites. So if you're not doing that in your local development, I suggest you look at the commonsensemedia.org site. They rate over 28,000 pieces of media. Anything a kid or family wants to watch on a screen, so if you're educating families, uh, again, if a new a nine-year-old gets the internet at home, they'll probably uh, make social media. So is Snapchat, is Facebook appropriate for a nine-year-old? Well, if you're not sure, you might want to introduce the Sense Media ratings 
to give you a subjective view of that content. So again, it's the nation's largest database. We partner with them in, in Denver. They're a nonprofit, which is nice, so they have nothing to sell. Because as soon as you bring the internet into any home, you're going to be faced with ads. And uh, uh, so the Common Sense Media site is, is a great uh, a part of our training. We uh, also do uh, a lot of student uh, programs. In fact, we're doing one here next week uh, with the Boys and Girls Club down at the Johnson Center. Uh, they have a summer program on using technology, and so we, we uh, do a whole hour on uh, on how to uh, be a good what's called digital citizen. So uh, some of the uh, elements of our work here in Denver, uh, I would say, uh, I echoed earlier, just trying to engage parents is always challenging, but you have it through the schools, and that's what we've discovered with this partnership. Uh, in their limited time, they do make time for their schools, but you have to go through the school. Uh, and uh, we we started doing a lot more parent copies because uh, parents off sometimes at drop off they're available. Uh, parents at night are pretty busy. Uh, parent copies have been successful, and of course, just building relationships with folks at the school level. That's uh, certainly key. Thank you. Hey, um, my name is Mary Grace Longoria. Um, I'm family and community engagement liaison for and um, really excited to have partnered this past year with Connect Home to ensure that our families the equipment and knowledge needed to be able to access educational opportunities through tech, right? And so we were excited to um, pilot this partnership. A little bit about Boulder first. We're a neighborhood school with uh, about 513 students, ECE through fifth, and 97% of our students um, are Latino, identify as Latino or Latina, and qualify for free or reduced lunch as well. And so the, our community needs are going to inherently be different than many other communities. And being able to custom build this program with Connect Home and HUD um, was absolutely necessary and um, definitely a, a major reason for our um, success. Um, we decided to partner directly with um, one point person at the school, which actually was our family liaison. Um, specifically because the family liaison we know is the most connected to our teacher organization, our parent leadership team, and uh, in the community, the school community um, in general. Um, so, so when changes need to be made or we need some partnership um, creating, working with the community is always the best way to go, and so we knew that going into this partnership. Uh, activities and events that we held throughout the year that really led to increase in that use of tech um, was we, at the beginning of the year, we had a large um, distribution of computers um, with PCs for People that was mentioned earlier as a community partner. Um, we were able to serve 100, over 125 families. And the reason for that success um, of so many families, honestly, is we partnered the, with the distribution with our um, literacy night. And so our fall literacy night tends to get a lot of um, attendance as well. So we figured that we, if we can tackle both at the same time, we're going to be reaching parents, um, even more parents. And so we also had a Comcast today um, event, both at Goldrick and at another um, for Housing Authority Opportunity Center, where, we were, where we, they, Connect Home was able to share a lot of the Internet Essentials classes with um, students. Um, also had another movie end of the year for students to be able to um, also learn about contact and essentials. And here, finally, we had a partnership with the University of Denver's Bridge Pro Project Collaboration, where with our little activity bus that we have at Goldrick, we were able to bus about a, over 100 kids, to, um, over 100 kids to the Westwood Technology Hub um, at the DH, at the Westwood DA to support robotics clubs in academic work. Um, we did a lot of great stuff this year, and really excited to continue continue the partnership with Connect Home, and I'll turn it to Tony. Great. Mary, thank you. Thanks, everyone, to Public Schools. Um, the slide has our contact information if you want to get a hold of us. A um, couple key takeaways that, I, that, that we've heard today is, you know, that having the connectivity is not enough. It's really a tool to put other things that we've heard from Brian and Katie, um, you know, connecting to online resources, now curriculum, connecting to how to engage with your child, seeing how their academic success is going. Um, and then Mary Grace pointed out, look at some other school events that you can be a part of, uh, like a literacy night or a coffee event that might be part of the PTA. 
And I think uh, partnering your connect home information with that is, is very valuable. I will leave it with that and look forward to any additional questions at the end of the, at the, end of the, the end of webinar. Thank you so much, everyone. That was a great presentation. And for folks um, uh, joining us, if uh, you don't already have your chat box open, on the front of your screen, you should see a chat box that you can use to ask questions. Uh, we'll have a Q&A at the uh, end of the webinar and uh, really encourage you to reach out to them. Uh, we appreciate um, Denver and everyone for being on, part on the call and for lending your time and sharing some of your uh, great success with us. So thank you, and uh, we're really also excited now to have um, folks from Fresno presenting um, their partnership model. Uh, so um, without further ado, uh, Bobby, are you on? Here. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, sure. So uh, at first, I, w I was definitely a, a little intimidated having to follow up Denver and all the great things that they're doing, um, and especially seeing the, the roster that they, they had. Um, but at the same time, I, I'm, I think it, it's good to kind of show any communities that might be on the smaller side that don't have quite any resources that there's still a way to participate without uh, having such a such a presence or you know such a large team. Um, so we're lucky in Fresno uh, as far as we have a great relationship with our uh, local school district, and they're the fifth largest in California, uh, and they are very data focused. So something that you know, as I'm sure we're all hearing today, is you know, data, 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 and how we use that to track success. So some things that we've done that are really to be uh, really he helpful is. is uh, set up a, a MOU, a memo of understanding, with a few of the local school districts to just kind of set the framework uh, to connect our data to theirs. So one one thing we did was create identifier in our information. Uh, we use Yardi uh, pro property management software to identify what school district the kids belong to, and then in their student information system, um, we've created. Uh, a link that says this is a Fresno housing kit. So anything, um, you know, as these data requests come in and being able to measure things like attendance, grade, uh, reading level, or, or really anything that we want, uh, not connecting the two data uh, systems makes it possible. Uh, and being able to filter that by uh, location gives us the ability to really pinpoint what the needs are at each site. and. Uh, adapt our curriculum to meet those needs. Uh, so one of the uh, great ideas that I like from Denver that we're we're also doing is from uh, familiarity when kids go from you know the school to their house and uh, and most importantly with you know interacting with their parents, we've also added shortcuts to you know parent portals or their 365 accounts, their Google Documents accounts to uh, our computer labs or any computers that we distribute so that when they start working on homework or any kind of work at, at school, they can transition to their home computer without uh, having to memorize you know, any URLs or any links um, that everything looks and feels the same because ultimately what we're trying to create is a, a sense of uh, device autonomy. Um, some of the cloud technologies so that they're not as reliant on having their quote unquote computer with them at all times. They know they can access things like uh, school records or, uh, you know, for the parents, uh, their resumes or any important documents where they are, even borrowing a friend's computer or a friend's phone. Um, kind of gives them access no matter where uh, they are, and so transportation issues aren't as big of an issue. You know, just echo, echoing what Denver said is the recruitment part. Um, you, just the resources of the housing authority wasn't getting the results we wanted, and so having the parent, you know, plugging into the PTA, having uh, you know conversations with at the schools about the extracurricular activities uh, they were doing, and continuing those with our programming at at the home. Uh, was really fruitful as far as uh, attendance and, and overall engagement and continued engagement. Um, we have one uh, 
program where we teach a robotics class and uh, we continued on the robotics competition and did recruitment at one of the robotics competitions at the school. And not only did we get you know a full turnout, but we also had students wanted to teach and student aides for robotics class. Um, you know, so that that alone creates kind of the ripple effect and is continue even when they're at you know their own home. Um, throughout this entire process, you know, Fresno being kind of one of the smaller connect home communities, has totally be innovative and creative and really lean on. Uh, community partners as, as possible so that we're not duplicating efforts. Um, there's a great program uh, at the school, you know, kind of reaching out and asking how we can help. And using our motto at the Housing Authority, which is stay in our lane <laughs> and helping with the resident portion, but not necessarily trying to take over something that the school districts are already doing or, or uh, you know, any other local partners are already doing and doing well. Um, figuring out how we can supplement that or help in any way we can. Uh, that's all I had. I was going to turn it back over to you, but thank you. Thanks so much, Bobby, and uh, really appreciate your perspective and the work happening in Fresno. And um, again, I encourage everyone um, to, to use the chat box. Uh, we'll have a Q&A in just a minute um, to follow up with everyone who's presented today. So um, I just kind of wanted to build off of what everyone was talking about today. Um, say that there are a lot of uh, different approaches to consider. It's not a one-size-fits-all model. Um, you know, some of the success we've seen in communities comes from partnering with libraries, after-school programs, um, you know, really finding out where, where is it um, that you can best fit in in your community. And um, we hope this has provided a, a few models for that. The, the playbook has a lot of information about approaches that you can take. And uh, as we look to bring on the next cohort of Kindle Nation communities, uh, we'll really be looking at, at um, the great work that you all are doing to help out a model for their success. Um, so that in mind, uh, I think we'll get up to questions, and if we still have all the presenters on the line, I want to check and see if um, Susan, if we were able to get um, Susan back in with us. We get through. Um, well, if you have any, um, hopefully we'll be able to get Susan in to join us. So uh, for folks who are on the webinar, um, there's a square chat bubble that you can click on that will bring up the chat with all, and uh, we'll have folks available for a Q&A. While we're waiting for a few questions to come in, I'll actually kick it off. Um, with a question for Fresno, um, which is that um, sort of where did you, when you were first getting started, um, kind of look to as a model for um, for your approach? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, really, it was the the initial convening of all the local stakeholders. I think we had close to 25. Uh, just trying to see how we can expand on what they're already doing. One of the, the greatest connect home is the connection to the other communities. So as soon as we started uh, getting our programs rolling, we reached out to other communities within connect home and asked what they're doing, and, and you know asked our local representatives from say Comcast or someone else, say here's what uh, Denver's doing. Uh, how do we do that here? So it was leaning on local community members through that initial convening, and also the the rest uh, the other connect home communities. Great. Thank you. You were able to use Denver um, as a model. Uh, for folks who are on the wall from Denver, um, how are you able to sort of um, leverage your experience to serve uh, in a mentor role um, with Fresno and other communities? We've, um, um, I'll, I'll stress that having the Republic of our core team has been a critical piece to how we've grown. Having them a part of, you know, a monthly check in or something and advising us on where technology is being used. And what what technology tools they have. Um, there's been a lot of what we call quick wins that we could quickly align with the ed tech team, the parent portal team, um, and then take some of that knowledge into the local schools that we're working with. Um, and, uh, we'd love to connect with with Fresno more down the road. We we have reached out to other cities that are around Denver, um, including Salt Lake City and some others that we've shared 
what, what we've been doing um, and, and would look to more more mentor opportunities as well. And I'll do, this is Katie. Um, I mean, we had a lot of challenges. So, like, we present well, um, and we definitely have hit some bumps along the road and especially tried to host classes at the Opportunity Centers um, and to realize, like, the turnout just wasn't really high. And so, in kind of debriefing and lessons learning and really trying to process map how we can increase attendance and really connect our families was then when we were like, we have to go to schools. Like, we have to leverage schools um, within the community and around the housing um, developments, um, even if kids, we didn't know if, like, the kids all lived there. So it was really expanding this opportunity regardless of where the kids lived um, to the entire school um, because we have a massive choice system in Denver. And so we, we didn't only just target DJ residents specifically, but the community in which the housing developments were surrounded by. And so um, that's kind of some lessons learned along the way. And then looking at the school to say, where does this fit in with existing initiatives and goals that you have school level? So looking at higher district kind of initiatives and goals, and then really taking it down to the community level to say, okay, goals, Rick, you know, you guys want to increase your attendance rate and want to increase um, K through three literacy scores. And so how does the Connect initiative really tie into what you're already doing and how can we leverage that to be one kind of collaborative partner and meet the needs of all the all levels within that um, goal? And, and let me just add really quick that um, what's important is the school to be the driver. And the Authority can be the host. And as we develop technology hubs, we know technology and Wi-Fi network to allow things to happen. And, and we have we have many of our DHA residents, you know, right there. Having the school as a driver to promote the program, make kind of a school sponsored event that takes place at the different housing authority site is is another way to, to look at it. So that we are looking for more opportunities to have the schools be the host, um, which the schools can look at our technology hub as a resource, but we're not going to necessarily initiate it. Like in the case of the movie night. Um, the family liaison at, at Goldrick really did a promotion and figured out who goes to Goldrick that's in our different housing authority site. And we did some promotion to, to those more targeted individuals. And they, I think, you know, more interested in, in, in it because the school was behind it. So. Thank you so much. That was uh, very helpful. And I think um, I provided a lot of rich information. Um, so, so building off of some of the things that you were just talking about, um, mentioned some of the challenges, uh, what were the sort of um, so, uh, the roadblocks you really encountered and um, and how you work through that? I know, um, you know, Fresno also mentioned, Bobby, that, uh, you know, they had some initial challenges too, so I'd be curious to know um, how you work through some of those. Yeah, we, I mean, definitely there's been some challenges. Uh, one, for instance, was, uh, we had a grant through the Public Utility Commission to pay for an infrastructure upgrade uh, to basically turn about 17 of our properties into uh, properties just like a hotel. Um, we did all the construction, setting up, and then uh, the ISP that was signed up uh, cut all of our contracts because they felt like we were violating internal procedure. Uh, uh, and so, effectively, we had 12 sites that had all this equipment, spent all this money, and had no internet. So challenges like that really taught us to fail small, to try, you know, pilots at each uh, individually in small properties just to see what would work. Um, but also to plug into your local and, if possible, national IE leadership. Uh, the, the idea is that you have, or, you know, because a lot of this is really new ground, that the idea that you have uh, is going against the grain of where their industry is. Um, so the lessons learned that we've taken uh, away from this are mostly around, you know, failing small, but uh, find a, a, a partner in this that's going to be creative with you and, and is kind of looking to uh, an understanding of what the goal is here, and that it's not always to provide, you know, a, a way to market great internet, 
is to find a way to make it free for people. Uh, Tony, uh, one one challenge that, that we found was that you may distribute um, computers to, to many families, and but haven't necessarily given given them the information as to how to use it, um, you know, most effectively for our academic purposes. And so, a lot of computers are now with internet hotspots, and a lot of questions come to us um, after after that 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 event takes place. We're, we're learning that, that you can try to address it as we work with some other schools. Is that uh, prior to receiving the computer? We get a tech team or the parent portal team a part of kind of an overview of you know here's what's on your computer and here's how to use it. I uh, can help with with more effective use that that follows the uh, event. Yeah, and this is key again. Another one was um, really our initial strategy was basically offer schools like a huge menu of services. So they could have Connect Home marketing material. They could have actually a DHA representative come to. A call event there to help kind of market and inform families, um, and then we tied in the classes. And so what we realized is like we created a Google essentially form um, to to provide schools with like a menu of services. So like I think it's important to know that even if you have we have Goldrick in Southwest Denver, and we have a school you know several blocks down the street, and to know even though they're in the same community, they have different needs. And so I think giving the school and finally realizing when you had to get the school the economy to really choose like we're working with Castro and they actually only wanted marketing materials at the end of the school year and us to speak at a parent event and then this upcoming year they'll be ready to implement some classes and so I think it's just really important in the schools are within the same community, they're all very different. And so allowing the schools that autonomy to kind of pick from a menu of services, like what options that they have, that way you can really customize um, the Connect Home partnership plan specific to their school community. Thank you. And uh, we have a question on the line, and I also just want to check and see if Susan was able to, um, to reconnect to join us. Question is, how did you all identify the needs of each school regarding digital literacy? Um, so, you know, the, the needs assessment piece, and then also um, how do you work with the schools to do that? I remember. I thought I have is for Katie mentioned some data here portal that we have. Adoption rates for each school. Yeah, so we um, looked, so we pull um, adoption rates weekly um, for the parent portal and identified schools based on adoption rate. Um, again, it was an assumption, um, but typically lower adoption rates for our um, Taiwan schools um, that we know had, had limited access and literacy skills. And so instead of singling out um, specific I guess needs, we decided that we would just target our lower adoption schools, assuming that those schools needed more support <laughs> in the areas of technology. Um, so that was a way that we identified and then we plotted them kind of on the map as it was in relation to um, our piloted housing development. And I'll, and I'll add with our partner pieces for people, when we do a distribution like at Goldrick, there's this kind of a survey that's on there that asks, do you currently have internet in your home? Computer devices, is your computer working or is it broken? So you get um, in that in that distribution event of, of needs are. And in many cases they don't need internet, they just need a working computer device. And then along with every year DPS does a parent and student satisfaction survey. And so a couple years ago we added a question about access and use. Um, so we looked at that data prior to to kind of our strategy planning for the Connect Home, how we're going to target areas. So we also looked at that's also self-reported. Um, so we could see, you know, how many or how many surveys were turned in for that school, and kind of do some like data on. Okay, so that many were turned in. We're missing, you know, 500 families didn't turn one in, um, and then it was all self-report. So again, there was some skew in the data, but we really used that to identify also our schools. Um, based on that data. Well, thank you so much. And again, we really just appreciate all of the, the great 
uh, nights and, and your time and, and sharing all this with us today. Um, I think we might have actually Susan now on the line with us. Uh, Susan, are, are you here? Can you hear me now? Hi. Susan, yes, thank you. Sorry for the technical issues. So Hooray. I want to uh, give you a chance just to sort of um, provide some concluding remarks for everyone um, from your experience at the Department of Education. And, um, and and thank you all again for um, just thing and, and being part of this. Um, really, you're you're helping to make uh, this success happen across the country. So thank you. And Susan, um, if you uh, want to provide some remarks, and then folks, just to let them know that um, the slides will be provided after the presentation, and um, there'll be contact information for everyone who is on the webinar today. Well, I'd like to uh, thank all of our presenters today. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed listening. Um, to everybody, and I hope that um, the, what we heard today will be helpful to other PHAs and school communities. Uh, one thing I have learned is that the solution to the digital divide or uh, how to address the homework gap, it is not a school community, it is not a school problem, it is not a public housing problem, it is truly a community problem. I think that the best way for us to find solutions because every community is different. Every community is going to have different challenges with regard to connectivity, with regard to digital literacy, um, with regard um, you know, to the culture of a particular community and school. Um, I think the, that we'll, the only way we're going to solve these issues is by working together. And I want to thank the participants in today for doing such a wonderful job in modeling um, the kind of successful community partnerships, and I hope that um, these are something that we can expand uh, because uh, this program like this can really make, make a difference um, in the academic lives of kids. So thank you all for attending the webinar today, and thank you to our presenters. Thank you so much, Susan, and uh, we look forward to having everyone on um, future webinars about the playbook, so um, please be a lookout for those invites and, and join us for those. So thank you so much, everyone, and have a great day.